what's been on your mind this whole time that we're finding these uh, zeros, you're thinking, where are the imaginary zeros? Here they come. No, we weren't thinking that? 2.5a. All righty. We're going to stay with our, or our polynomials. We're going to find the zeros, but we're going to have complex roots now. This is going to be very complex. Complex roots. Okay. So we've talked about this already before, that if we have a fourth degree polynomial, we're expecting four zeros. And if we have a fifth degree polynomial, we're expecting five and so on and so on. Um, but sometimes we graph and we only see three zeros instead of five. Well, what is that? Are they just gone? No, they're imaginary. They're complex. They don't show up on our real number graph. So we're going to do the first part today. Is we're going to find all the zeros. <clears throat> So, so far, we mostly have found rational zeros. There were a couple irrational zeros that we found, like rad 2, negative rad 2. But we're going to find them all, including the complex ones. Now, here's how you find zeros. There's a lot of ways. Bless you. There's a lot of ways to find zeros. Um, for example, the real zeros, those guys will show up as x-intercepts on your graph. So you can always get your real zeros that way unless you don't have your calculator, which sometimes you don't. But you can graph it, find the x-intercepts. Um, other ways to find real zeros or any zeros would be to factor. Uh, if you have a quadratic polynomial, you could use the quadratic formula. Okay. Um, another way is if I give you a couple of zeros, like on your last quiz, I gave you a couple of factors, and you took the zeros, and you did synthetic division okay, to divide them out and find the other ones. We're going to do all these things. <coughs> so here we go. Let's just start. Number one, we're going to find all the zeros of this polynomial. f of x is equal to um, x to the fifth plus x cubed plus 2x squared minus 12x plus 8. Wow. Okay. Now, unless you're some kind of a genius, you can't factor that. That would be really tough to factor. Um, you could list all the possible rational zeros, which would be factors of 8 over factors of 1, and test them all out. You don't want to do that. No, me neither. Okay, so I'm going to tell you, this is how you do these problems. Step number one is you will get this on the calculator portion of your test, and you're going to start by graphing. Okay, step number one, graph on your calculator. So go to your calculator. Did you bring it? My calculator. And go ahead and start graphing this. our calculator and we're going to find the zeros. All right, so when I graphed it on the calculator, it goes through negative 2. And then what happens at 1 there? It's a double, right? It's a double at 1. Okay. So I have found three zeros already just by graphing on my calculator. So I have found that x equals negative 2 is a 0. And x equals 1 is a 0 with a multiplicity of 2. Yeah? Um, it says it won't let me graph because it balances it. Oh, turn your plots off. Go to back to y equals. Uh, That's okay. And then turn them off. And then try zoom, zoom uh, 6. Did you let, lend your calculator to an Algebra 2 student? No, I tutored. Oh, nice. You tutored? That's so good. Okay. Here we go. Now... Um, we're done with the calculator because that's all the calculator is going to help us do. Sam. Yeah, Sam. You're in trouble again, Sam. Um, so what we're going to do now is we're going to take these real zeros and we're basically going to divide them out of our polynomial. Now, who likes long division? No. Oh, a couple of you do. Wow, I don't. I like synthetic division. <laughs> so let's take negative 2, which is a 0, and let's do synthetic division with our polynomial. Now we're going to put all the coefficients down. Remember, if there's any missing, you have to put a zero there, okay? So 1x to the fifth 
zero x to the fourth, one x cubed, two, negative 12, and eight. And what should our remainder be? Zero. It will be. Mm -hmm. It has to be zero. If not, you did it wrong. You gotta start over and erase. All right, so bring down the one. One times negative two is negative two. We're adding our columns. Negative two times negative two is four. Add to get five. Negative 10, I get negative eight. 16, four, negative eight, and zero, yay! Okay, now what I just did was I took my fifth degree polynomial and I divided it by one of its zeros. So now I'm down to a fourth degree polynomial. I still don't wanna factor that, so I'm gonna do it again. And this time I'm going to use one. One is also a zero, so I should get a remainder of zero at the end. So let's see, one, one times one is one. Negative one, negative one times one is negative one. Four, four, negative four, negative four, and zero. Yay! Okay, so I took it down from a fifth degree to a fourth degree. Now it's a cubic. I could probably factor that if I were to write it out and factor by grouping. But you know what you can do? You can go one more time. But you're like, wait, there's only two zeros. What am I going to use? Yeah, I'm going to use another one because it has a multiplicity. Isn't that cool? You don't like that. <laughs> All right, we're going to do it. One, one times one is one, zero, zero, four, four, zero, yay. Okay, now what I end up with is x squared plus four, okay? That's not factorable, because that's not the difference of two perfect squares, but I can set this equal to zero and solve it, either by quadratic formula, which I don't want to use, or any other method that I know. Well, I'm gonna subtract four to the other side, and then I'm going to take the plus and minus square root. And what's the plus and minus square root of negative 4? 2i. Okay, so let's go back to what the question's asking. <laughs> it's a long question, right? It said find all the zeros. So now I'm just going to list them. The zeros of my polynomial are 1. Um, we could say 1 with a multiplicity of 2. Because they might ask you for any multiplicities. One with a multiplicity of two, negative two, and plus or minus two i. And we should expect to get five of them, and there are five of them there, because the one happened twice. Okay, isn't that fun? Now, the other thing is, is we can actually list these as factors too. So the other question that might be, instead of just listing them as zeros, it might be to factor the polynomial completely which you would have x minus one squared, <clears throat> x plus two, and then x plus two i, and x minus two i. And you can leave it just like that, okay? There you go, there's all the factors of it. Now that brings me to um, a point here where people sometimes don't like to factor it like this right here with the two i and the negative two i. They'd rather you leave it as x squared plus 4 because they don't want imaginary or complex numbers in there. So let me show you the difference between if they're going to ask for something like that, okay? All right. Um, so number two. We're going to factor this polynomial over three different sets of numbers. We're going to factor f of x equals x to the fourth minus x squared minus 20, okay? We're gonna factor this three different ways. The first way that we're gonna factor this is over the rational numbers, okay? In other words, all of my factors that I'm gonna factor it out as, they're gonna be nice numbers. Do you remember what rational numbers are? Rational numbers are um, real numbers. They're not fractions, or no, they are fractions. They're not radicals or pi or, you know, irrational numbers. They're all rational. Okay, so let's go ahead and factor this. Do you remember how to factor a fourth degree polynomial like this? Yeah? You factor like a normal one? Yeah, exactly. But instead of x and x, you're using x squared and x squared. And then what times what's negative 20 adds up to negative 1 would be negative 5 and positive 4. So that would be factored over the rationals. Okay, the next one is I want us to now factor this over the real numbers. If I'm going to factor this over the real numbers, well, I can keep factoring this one right here. 
And I know that you're like, wait a minute, though. That's not the difference of two perfect squares. You're right. It's not. But it can be factored with ugly numbers. This right here factors as x plus rad 5 and x minus rad 5. Yeah. And this one cannot be factored over the real numbers because those have imaginary complex um, zeros. So that's over the real numbers. The real numbers is I take this and I break it up into rad 5. And negative. Rad 5 is a real number. It's just irrational. And then finally, over the complex system, complex includes imaginary numbers. So I'm going to do x plus rad 5 and x minus rad 5. And then I'm going to factor this x squared plus 4. And then you're like, wait a minute, I've always learned from algebra 2. You can't factor that. That's the sum of two perfect squares. It always has to be the difference. But it doesn't. This is x minus 2i and x plus 2i. We've just never factored it over anything other than rational numbers before. That's tough, right? You used to stop here, and you were happy. And now you're here, and even here. Whew, you're not happy anymore, are you? I can see it on your faces, some of you. OK, so let's go ahead and talk about, real quick, um, just the zeros, OK? The zeros of a polynomial, the zeros are going to be if your polynomial is degree n, then you will have n zeros or n factors or roots or solutions, whatever you want to call them. OK, so we know that. If it's a fourth degree polynomial, I'm looking for four zeros. If it's a seventh degree polynomial, there's going to be seven of them. Now, some of them might happen twice or three times. OK, now let's talk about complex zeros. Complex zeros, a plus bi, OK? They always come in pairs. Always come in pairs. OK? And those pairs have a special name. They are called, does anyone remember? It starts with a C. Conjugates, yes. Who was that? Is that you, Jeanette? No, it's Catherine, huh? Nope. Yeah. <laughs> Yay, conjugates, conjugates, OK? Now, what are conjugates? Conjugates are, have we done conjugates before in this class? I think so. When we, when we had to divide complex numbers, we used the conjugate and multiplied top and bottom. So if I had 3 plus 2i, let's say 3 plus 2i is a 0, then guess what? 3 minus 2i also is a 0. They always go together. They're pairs, like twins or girls going to the bathroom, you know, things like that. Mm -hmm. <laughs> True, right? OK, here we go. Um, now, B. B. So let's go ahead and talk about when we are actually given, given zeros, how to find a polynomial, given the zeros. Okay, so let's go ahead and just take that, that one that I just did. So are we just on number two? Is this really just the second problem we've done? Yeah, it's a lot of time. Is it three? Three. Oh, that's right. We factored two. Good call. Is it cold in here? It was warm, and now it's cold again. Yeah. Okay, so let's say that you are given three plus or minus two i are zeros of your polynomial. We need to find f of x in standard form. OK? So we're given that 3 plus 2i and 3 minus 2i are zeros. We need to find a polynomial in standard form. So here we go. Let's first write these as factors, OK? We're going to have two factors. And they're going to be bigger than normal, but they're still two factors. And our first one is going to be x minus 3 plus 2i. And our second one will be x minus 3 minus 2i. Is everybody OK with that? Why is it 9? Because remember, factors are always the opposite. Like if I had 2 as a 0, then it would be x minus 2. It. So it's going to be minus. Yep. OK, so let's go ahead and fix that a little bit. Let's distribute our minus to both terms. 
and minus 3 plus 2i. And now guess what we get to do? Mm -hmm. Super foil. Right? That's fun. Okay, here we go. There is another way to do this. I don't teach it. If you know a different way to do this, some of you might. Um, you can do your way. That's fine. Uh, I learned it a different way too, but the book teaches it this way, so this is the way I'm going with. All right, here we go. Super foil. X times X is X squared. X times negative 3 is negative 3X. And X times 2I is 2IX. That's just one. Here we go. Now take the negative 3 and distribute it. Negative 3 times x is negative 3x. Negative 3 times negative 3 is positive 9. And negative 3 times 2i is negative 6i. Everyone okay? We're just distributing. Now we're going to take negative 2i and do it again. So I get minus 2ix plus 6i. And then I get minus 4i squared, which I'm going to fix in a minute. OK. Now, anything that has just an i in it will cancel out. It will. OK? So this positive 2ix and a negative 2ix, those cancel each other out. I also have a negative 6i and a positive 6i. That's gone also. And what is negative 4i squared? Four. That is plus 4. Remember, i squared is negative 1, so that's plus 4. So now we have all our normal terms, and let's go ahead and get them together. So I have x squared. I have a minus 3x and a minus 3x make negative 6x. And then I have a positive 9 and a positive 4 is 13. So there's my polynomial with those zeros. Pretty bad, huh? Yeah. The way that you'd go the other way is you'd have to do quadratic formula and you'd get those zeros. Okay, now we're going to do the next one, which we're going to love even more. It's easier if they give you like 5i and negative 5i. But that one was, you know, it had an A and a B term, so that one was tough. Okay, here's this last one. I think this is the last one for the day even. Yes. Ooh, seven minutes. Okay. Um, number four. Okay, I'm going to give you a zero, and then we have to um, find all the other zeros. This is no calculator, okay? Non-calculator section, and we are given that one plus three i is a zero of f of x equals x to the fourth minus 3x cubed plus 6x squared plus 2x minus 60. Woo. OK. I'm given that 1 plus 3i is a 0. I need to find all four zeros of this polynomial. Now, I wish I could graph this on my calculator and find the x-intercepts, but you cannot. This is a non-calculator problem. All right, there's a couple ways to do this problem. They're both terrible. Mm -hmm. um, <laughs> first of all, you could write down all the possible zeros that are rational and test them all. That would be a lot. How many factors are there of 60? Too many, mm -hmm. so don't do it that way. Okay, uh, you could take x minus 1 plus 3i times x minus 1 minus 3i and foil that out and then do long division. I don't think I'm going to do that either. So this is what I'm going to do. Well, I know that 1 plus 3i is a 0. So I'm going to take 1 plus 3i and I'm going to do synthetic division with it. And my, rem my remainder will be 0. All right, so I have 1, negative 3, 6, 2, negative 60. Are you ready for this? It's really awful. It doesn't look so bad, but you'll see why it's bad in just a minute. Yeah. All right, bring down the 1. 1 times 1 plus 3i is 1 plus 3i. Go ahead and add your cos. <laughs> Sam, Sam just realized how bad this is going to be. This is negative 2 plus 3i. And now I need to multiply these. So we have, yeah, we got to foil that. Yes, some of you just realized it too. You're like, this is terrible. I'm going to foil down here. 
No, don't don't be a quitter. Only if you're quitting, you know, killing people or smoking, that's then you should quit. But otherwise, do not quit math. It's really good for you. It's good for your brain. It's good for your mind. <coughs> yeah. But it's going to get easier. It will. You'll see. Okay. So this is negative 2 uh, plus 3i minus 6i and then minus 9. Are you okay with that? So it's negative 11 minus 3i. Perfect. Okay. Negative 11 minus 3i. Now let's go ahead and add that again. So you get negative 5 minus 3i. We're going to do it one more time to FOIL. Okay? 1 plus 3i times negative 5 minus 3i. So I get negative 5. Outside is negative 3i. Inside is negative 15i. And my last term would be positive 9 this time. Because it's 3i times negative 3 is negative 9i squared, which is positive 9. So that gives me what? 4 minus 18i. Okay. Go ahead and add that. And you get 6 minus 18i. Now, you have to do it again, but you know what you're going to get. What do you have to get right here? Zero. 60 so that you get 0. And if you were to FOIL those out, they actually, the I's will cancel out and it will give you 60. You should believe me, or you can FOIL it, but you know that you're going to get 60 there. Okay, now we're going to do it one more time with 1 minus 3i. And you're starting to groan and you're getting all mad, but you know what? This works out so nice. It does. You'll see. So go ahead and bring the 1 down. 1 times 1 minus 3i, look what happens. Oh, Sam, see, look how good that is. When you add that, the eyes, your eyes cancel out. Yeah, yeah but it's going to be easy. Now it's just distributing. So you get negative 3. Oh, wait, did I? I made, no, that's negative 1. You know, it would be really good if you knew how to subtract this price. All right, so that would be negative 1. I know. And then you get negative 1 plus 3i. Ooh, the i's are going to cancel out again, giving you negative 6. And negative 6 times 1 is negative 6 plus 18i. Look at that. 0. Okay, now you're like, now what? <laughs> you're all mad at me. Don't hate me. It's not my problem. It's your problem. All right. x squared minus x minus 6 after we've done all that. And guess what? Mm -hmm. That's factorable. And that's not hard factoring. That's like algebra 1 factoring, right? What times what's negative 6 adds up to negative 1? x minus 3 and x plus 2. And so then what you get is we need to list all four zeros. Are you ready? So here are zeros. 1 plus 3i, 1 minus 3i, 3, and negative 2. And there they all are. Isn't that fun? Do you feel like you accomplished nothing, something?